Inspiration Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. Here we are, a two-man band again with Jose Neuer, who absolutely cannot understand the concept of be quiet before we go live. If you want to see all the shenanigans, just follow us, Jose Neuer, Inspiration Nation, on YouTube. Hit subscribe. It will tell you when we are going live, and you will be able to see all of the nonsense. It's great, actually, yeah. Because I was trying to go to TikTok Live, trying to merge at the same time. Anyway, yeah. So, Lee, what are we talking about this week, then? Um, I am up this week, Joe. So, we talked about this a few weeks ago, um, or a few weeks ago in chronology time, and I'd forgotten, Joe, I've actually wrote down a couple of ideas. One, you inspired me on the show, and I remembered my third C of the three Cs as well. So, I think what I'm going to do, Joe, is I'm going to give you the choice. Do you want to talk about the three Cs, or do you want to talk about the return to mindfulness? Well, I'm thinking return to mindfulness. I don't know why, but yeah. I'm liking it. Okay, so this is just one of those silly concepts in my head. Or there, there's a couple of layers on this, actually. One, well, we touched on it last week. So, we'll, or the week, we recorded last week, but it might be two or three weeks ago. I'm all over the show. Too much coffee, not enough coffee. I never know which one it is. So, <laughs> Joe just held his Costa cup up there for those not looking on video. So, return for mindfulness. And this is saying I realised it a while ago, because you know, I've talked about this probably over the last 18 months or so of me getting more and more into the concept of mindfulness and my belief in it and how important it is for things you do in life. And what, you know, there's loads of ways to practice mindfulness, but one of the ways is concentrating on an object, you know, becoming hyper aware of your surroundings. So for example, I have a pen here. It's quite a chewed pen because I chew my pens. It's a terrible habit. But if I was to really focus on the pen, what the pen looks like, the shape of the pen, the colour of the blue, the fact of the shape of where the lip comes out, the little metal bit here. I'm doing terrible descriptions, but really focusing on the shape, the texture, everything about it. That's how you slow your brain down, you focus, you get rid of all the noise and you just bring yourself in on something. And it's a way to bring a moment of calm to yourself. And that's one illustration of it. I was sitting here in my living room at some point a little while ago and we were watching a bit of TV and as part of the watching the TV I started looking at the, the coving around the top of my ceiling and how it looks and just really being in that one moment and as you know Joe I've been on a massive uh, mission to decorate and actually I was thinking that, oh it's really relaxing in this room and starting to you know take in the surroundings and feeling relaxed and it triggered in my head so oh, this is a real mindfulness thing. And then I realised it triggered something else, which was more of a memory. And actually, this behaviour of being very aware of the room and its shape. And I do things like, you imagine, oh, I could change this and put this here. and just, But not like busy, 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 more relaxing and really taking in, again, the shape and everything. I'm labouring on this point a lot. And I remember I used to do that back in my teens when I was at home, home, home family home with my mum and we're watching TV and I do the same sort of thing and it suddenly clicked that all this mindfulness I strive for now I used to do it without even realising it was mindfulness and then things got busier and life got busier and stresses came in and you know went through all my journey of various things and I stopped that habit and I feel like I've now come back to doing that but it's almost a byproduct of being more relaxed and comfortable with where I am, I think. And this is why I say it's a return for mindfulness in that I think I had that, and it wasn't a conscious thing, but I was relaxed enough to be taken in my surroundings. And things happened in life that just brought in stresses and I stopped doing it and the stresses took over. And I think as some of that has dissipated over the years, I've started to return to that place that's quite a comforting place. And I don't know if it's comforting because it makes me feel like I used to when I was younger or if it's comforting because of the mindfulness technique and it does what it says on the tin and I used to do that before. But I just feel like I've got back to a place, if you like, where that's something I've started doing and I just joined the dots to what is mindfulness. There's a big follow-on to this from that, but I'll pause for a breath on that and see what you think of my bit of self-reflection before we talk a bit deeper. Yeah, you look very I, I thoughtful like on this one, Joe. Sorry? You look very thoughtful sitting there. Yeah, I just wanted to take it all in because I wrote a few things down when you were really, because it, it sort of takes you back to that previous episode that we had on Sim Covey about the spiritual. And it seems like you're quite naturally spiritual because mindfulness is part of a spiritual practice. Um, 
but, but you know you, you, whether you're not, you don't have to believe you know in anything you can still do the spiritual practice and it really works so yeah i love that and it was we talked about stephen covey the full circle the four things spiritual physical etc etc if you go back to that episode but when you were saying about that you did it naturally when you were younger it's really interesting to me because you triggered a, a memory for me which is yeah. really interesting um because because i'm thinking when we, when we're younger is it more natural that we do it we just we just hit ourselves we just get ourselves out of it because we just get involved in tr striving i suppose striving i suspect um because when I, I i've said this to my sister as well like i i want to get back to a place where when i was a kid i just would just go with the go with the flow I, I, i'd have like i'd want to do such and such but i would just go with life a little bit like and I want to get a bit more of that into my life where it is happening more because like you say, I'm being more mindful, but I'd like to get back to the, when I was a child or when I was like in my teens, I was just go, Hey, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with that flow. Let's just go with it. Like change would happen, but I just go, well, let's just go with it. See what happens. Like almost like a, I'm just open to things, like a bit of a carefree attitude to it to see, Oh, I'd like to get a bit more of that. Now the, the memory that got triggered was when I was playing football, actually, and I was quite young, I was probably in my, about 13 and and uh, we've been playing football and i don't i don't know whether this is mindfulness league. maybe you could give me your view we're playing football it was like in this local place and you're playing on this sort of you know, dusty gravel thing back in the day so it's probably would have been back in the late 80s anyway and i'll be playing football but then i'd suddenly look up at the lights you know the, the floodlights and i'd go look at them and i'd squint and i'd make the lights like expand i'd be fascinated by the way the lights would you know like do go like a star and i'd just stand there and my dad would turn around he says you're meant to be playing football what are you doing but i'd be almost like daydreaming getting involved in this whole light thing going on and i wonder whether that's you know whether we because we get focused on football we've been told what to do and we get focused on that whether there's a a a a, 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 a clashing of things where we, I was naturally being mindful of this light where I should be playing football, but actually I was more interested in this light thing. I don't know what you make of that, Lee, but that is like from my, that triggered that memory, which is really interesting. I was looking at light, I felt really calm. I felt really just in the moment, just in, just being there. But when you go back to the football, you're more, in, oh, you're, you're trying to strive, trying to score a goal, you're trying to do things. Whereas just taking that moment out, I actually was more of a daydreamer, more of a looking out the that window does, type that person. That does sound like yeah. that whole... Yeah. yeah, a similar, very similar thing. It's very interesting. Mm. So I wonder whether we, we're wired naturally when we're born to do that and then we lose it because of, of what society and things dictate to us and the things we strive for. But anyway, Lee, you're going to carry on. No, no, that's good. It's really good views on that. So, yeah, that's my that's my trick to fit is I do feel like I'm... It just triggered all those thoughts and I'm in that, like I said, it's almost that's why that's why it's returned to mindfulness, if you like. And, it, and mm. I put that down to... I mean, you know, like I said, stresses, things like that. A period of my life where I was probably more surviving than thriving. So things were more, you know, life stresses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe as things have relaxed more over the years I'm, and other things have fell in place, it's that, that return to it. So is it the stress that's taken me away from the mindfulness or is the world just changing? And we touched on this a few weeks ago, but part of the reason that when I was younger, I'd have those same daydreaming moments, shall we say, whatever they are, as you're watching TV, and it's probably a repeat of something you've seen 50 times before because there's not that much new content. Or it's the adverts, and you can't skip the adverts because recording live TV isn't a thing, and the adverts are on, so again, you drift off a bit. Or it's the programme before the programme you want to see, so it drifts off a bit. Or, you know, computer games and stuff, but they're not, there's just not much content. And my phone, was not a smartphone because they did not exist. In fact, for a long time, my phone wasn't even a phone because they didn't exist in having a mobile phone. You didn't then have, oh, let's scroll on this, let's see this, let's look at it. It just wasn't as much going on. And that, I think that permeated through everything in life. Everything wasn't as instant as it is now. We talked about the whole delivery thing that now I think takes two days, it's a liberty, but you used to wait a month and you wouldn't even bat an eyelid about it. So everything wasn't as instant. The pace of life was slower. And did that allow more space to be mindful because your mind had more time to wander? And now with, you know, deliveries come straight away. I want this. It's here tomorrow. There's nothing. I'm going to scroll through my phone. All this TV's on demand and there's new, there's a 10 new shows and I've never got time enough to watch them all. And is there just less time now because of 
and I use the entertainment stuff as an illustration, but it's it's with it's with everything. And again, we talked about it a few weeks ago. People go back in the archive, listen to it. But is life at such a pace now that there's always something to do or be doing that you don't have those moments for your mind to drift off so much? And almost in parallel, you could put it on a graph that I don't know intensity of life, and in parallel is the need for mindfulness as a concept. You know as as we have less time to be mindful, is that why there's been this increase in mindfulness as a concept and awareness and books and help guides and everything else? Because we need to make sure we retain some of that for our brains that we used to do naturally and almost a progression of technology has pushed out the space for that. So yeah. I realise that's a really broad concept, but a few things we talked about the other week just kind of got my brain thinking on that. Yeah, I think it's got a lot of value this. There's a couple of things that I've thought about when you were talking actually i agree our attention is drawn all the time like like you said you never used to have instant live streaming did you now you can get on your phone and you're getting notifications you've all got always got something that you could do right and get involved in because you know when you play computer games you get involved don't you and you're like in it yeah well all the time even today when i was i was going upstairs and i was like looking at my phone i felt oh i feel like i'm sucked up into the phone I thought, hang on, I've got to check out of that and actually look around for a bit because literally I didn't feel I was, I didn't feel I was in the real world. I felt I was in my phone. Like, my co- like literally, I was, if you imagine, like, this is how I, now I'm articulating, this is really weird. But when I'm looking at my phone, I'm not really there. I'm in my phone. I'm not there. So when you see people walking on the freak, they're not there. They're, they're actually in the phone because they're like, oh, sorry about that because only when they bump into someone, they wake up, right? It's like a computer game and you get sucked into that world. Now we are sucked into world and world and that's where the money is. That's where the attention is. That's why our attention has been drawn because like you said, eyeballs before create money, right? So the more people spend time on platforms or whatever, that's what makes money. So we're distracted all the time to look. That's why, do you want to allow notifications? We get a notification, oh, all right. And then you're on to the next thing. And before you know it, the evening's gone. You've not, your brain's not rested and you're, it's crazy. A couple of things, I agree with you. I think we just got too much there was just so much going on that we need to take time out like when we were young <laughs> Ryan would be having a field day with this uh, <laughs> but when we were younger right when we were younger we didn't have any of that like you said you could take the time and that's why I agree with you it is we do need to go back more to that because the human brain does need that downtime like it needs its sleep you need to have those breaks that's why things like the Pomodoro technique works, like 30 minutes on, five minute break. Or you go, you have a break, you go for a little walk and you get a bit of inspiration, right? The same for me. I go for a walk every morning and I'll literally, my phone will be in my pocket because I've got to take it with me. But, but I, will be, I won't be focused on the phone. I'll be just focusing on the trees and the birds or whatever, right? So that will be the focus and that will be designed for me so my brain is not engaged. My, I will not pick my phone out of my pocket. The other thing I do, and Mel Robbins talks about this, is that I don't have my phone in my bedroom because the brain is still aware it's there and it's still firing even when it's in the bedrooms. That was the science that she was talking about. So I have the phone away from me. It's not nowhere near the bedroom because I recognize, because when I come off it, I don't know how about you, Lee, but when I've been on the phone for a while, I can act, when I'm actually checking, and you, you're probably better than this, because I've had to learn to sort of, I've told you before, I'm quite extrovert. So I've had to learn to, know about how i'm feeling inside through the mental health stuff i've had to really train myself to go, how am i actually feeling right now and sometimes when i get off the phone because i do social media and stuff like that i actually feel quite stressed like i feel my brain it feels it hurts it actually hurts even now when i'm doing this podcast, i'm thinking we, we, we engage and we've got tiktok my brain is engaged it's like working and so yeah i feel it's on and i think that's where the mental health thing, you're on all the time and you do need to come off that and actually that's why Ray Dalio talks about meditation and mindfulness and like you said about that exercise you do with the pen, that he feels like meditation like it's going on holiday, like for your brain. It's like, right. And I actually did a bit of that today, to be fair. I felt today, there was quite a lot going on in my day at work. I'm going to take 10 minutes and I'm just going to sit and I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to have a thing. I'm just going to take that break. And I'm, reaching, I'm actually not going to have my phone. I'll put my phone away, away from me. And I just focused on just doing nothing and just literally focus on my breathing and just doing that and also Lee I did your mindful eating when I have my my, my, oh, my, my, yeah. my, my, my break yeah. I am just eat, I, 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 I sit on my own I don't have the telly on I don't have my phone on I just eat my food and just eat my food without anything and I can tell you something the benefit of that is huge because we you know you know me and you, you do it yourself you have to communicate with people we have to deliver messages can't be as effective if you're not 
got your energy it's really hard isn't it that's what i find yes no i agree 100 percent. and i do i i don't do it regularly enough i would say but i do every so often i'll do the mindfulness because i'm a nightmare for almost finishing eating and not even realize i've eaten not and not just from the whole oh i'm not sure i've eaten anything i'll eat some more but just enjoying the food taking it whatever and i will really do the same to you and i'll pull myself back and do that because how many times have you all seen that? I've not can't get the focus that it's on TikTok, but like we see people eating and they're going like this, and they're going, you know, oh hang on, let me just check that, and they go scrolling through, and it just really they cannot be enjoying their food, right? They just like eating, they just shoveling it, just shoveling it down, like you said, you know, really enjoy that. It's, it should be actually a quite a nice experience, right? It should be unless you're, you know, you're doing it for health reasons and some stuff you don't like, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> of course. Like, well, you know, but but then even then you still appreciate why you're doing it. What's the reason of eating this food? It's, it's for nutrition. It's you know you can still do it, right? You can still, and I think it's a really good practice, honestly. And I and I make a point of it now. At the minute, we're in a bit of red redecoration now. We've got no table or anything, so I used to sit at the table, and I will sit at the table again. I would sit at the table, no distractions, just sit in pure silence, no telly, no radio, nothing, nothing, and just sit and eat. And it's amazing. It's really amazing. And when you said that to me, I've really been practicing that a lot. I, I make that actually because you know sometimes I struggle to get meditation practice in. Yes, that's my meditation because you have to eat. You can't get away from eating, so that is a brilliant practice. And even when you do the pen thing, when are you going to get your pen out? You have to really make a point of it, don't you? I'm working, but eating is something we have to do. So let's, you know, so that's why I've made it into a practice, and it really does work really well. And I literally do not have anything on. So yeah, I don't know if that triggers anything for you, but I'm really learning, leaning into that when you said that. And I'm yeah, really I think it's important. It's just like, like it's being conscious of it. And actually, the thing you did say in that a bit earlier on with like we are remembering to be mindful and we're missing our third man here but if ryan was on ryan was born into the age of content into the age of screens so actually for him and like for younger generation certainly for like my my kids and stuff it's not remembering to be mindfulness it's teaching them to be mindfulness because there's almost not that opportunity to learn it naturally because you just, which is, don't get me wrong, this isn't an evils of technology. I think everything we have and the access to it is fantastic. There's just that little 5% of mindfulness you need to build in, I think, to, to optimise ourselves. And I say that because I will, the second we've done this, Joe, I'll be tidying up a bit, making some dinner. And the very first thing I do is pop in my earbuds and start listening to a podcast. So I am on the content treadmill yeah. like everyone else as well. And I love it. But there's just it's just building in those little opportunities as well for yourself, I think. Well, when you said that about cooking, actually, when I cook, I have on occasions had the phone on and you know listened to a podcast or a YouTube video. But actually, I've started actually turning it off and just enjoying the cooking as part of the process. And that's a good way to do it. Absolutely, just silence, just pure silence, and actually being yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I do you know what? It's weird you say that because now you're getting me to recall things that I'm actually doing, which is really strange. I don't always do it when I'm cooking, but sometimes because I want to listen to it, it's something inspirational. That's fine, that's good. But I try not to like that walking, not having any earbuds. That's why again, having earbuds is really tempting, isn't it? Because yes. you can just plug it in. But it's they're great because you learn on the go, which is fab. But then there's that. Where's that time for you to unplug, for you to give your brain a bit of a rest and to recharge and really then hit the next bit of development with real with gusto. You talking about you know, people born into screen age, I think you're right. Now, my beloved works in the education industry with, with younger children, so reception age, and they actually do do some mindful stuff, which is oh, really? really good. Yeah, which is really awesome. And I was saying, oh, I was saying, to, I was saying to my beloved, that's amazing. That is what, what people need to get from that age and actually practice it because literally they're, born, they're like, almost like born into the matrix, aren't they? Like they're yes. born into the... They could be born with a phone in their hand, essentially, because you see so many young children with phones in their hands and i can't imagine what the, they don't they won't know anything else literally they'll just be knowing this whole thing my consciousness is in the phone and elon musk talks about you know a you know he talks about cyborgs and stuff like that but we are actually he, he's, he's right we're already cyborgs because the phone we are actually connected to our phones and so we're already doing it it's not we are you were using it we're part of it already it's not necessarily part of us yet but it is really because our consciousness goes into it we are constantly in it like a computer game like vr like you said yes. you've got playstation 5 vr right i think this is such a big thing and like i could come off this thing now go downstairs get on my phone i'll have no break i could then go down watch some tv there's no break nothing there's no no nothing so you know when we go on holiday 
you know, are we going to take some time for ourselves to just, you know, be with our be with our people that we love and take the time just to say, let's just cart the phones and just like be with each other and just do nothing and just just be silent, talk, whatever, but just just you connecting. Um, Funny you should say that, Joe. I might have some insight for that on that in a couple of weeks time for you, Joe. Oh, pray tell. Well, conscious decisions on having a low tech <laughs> holiday. It's great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's hard to do, though. It's not easy to do because well, we're so tempted. This is why give you the insight and we'll tell you how it goes. Yeah, I'd be brilliant. It'd be brilliant because that's a perfect opportunity to, to totally switch up the routines, isn't it? Yeah. And, and I'm going away on holiday this year, and um, and my thoughts are, I'm going to get, I'm going to hit the gym, I'm going to get, I'm going to go some food, but then I'm thinking, when am I going to have that time to actually take in the experience, right? Because if we, you know, if I'm on my phone filming or photoing, I'm not there. Yeah. I'm in the phone. I'm looking at it through a lens. You know, so how can we merely take it in? Like, I, I, so I think, yeah, I, I'm, I really want to try. And, it really reminded me that when I go on holiday, I really need to focus on, don't put through everything through a phone. In fact, sometimes I've really been conscious. Actually, just tell you one more story. I don't know how much time we've got left. You're good. Go for one more story. I, oh, you all know this. I won a trip to the Wimbledon final. Do you remember? Yes. I was really tempted to get my phone out. Now, there's a couple of things that happened, actually. There was one moment in there when I felt actually quite anxious. And I don't know why I got a bit distracted. And this is the Wimbledon final. This is, this is Roger Federer versus Novak Djokovic. An absolutely brilliant, inspiring match. Um, we had uh, Helena Bonacar behind us with um, Borat. What's his name? Sasha Baron Sasha, Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by amazing things. And I did get my phone and took a few photos. But I was conscious of... what I was watching the match. At one point, I got anxious. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I did. But anyway, cut a long story short, I was really focused on making sure that I didn't use the phone. I took a few photos, but I was conscious of putting it in my pocket and really trying to enjoy the event, the experience. And so I still remember to this day, um, Novak won, but it was a really good experience. But I, there was, a, but even now I look at there was, and I don't know why this anxiety came up. Maybe I don't, I still don't know for this day. And I should have been, it should have been an amazing day. And it was an amazing day, but there's still this bit of anxiety, which is a really weird human condition, isn't it? We can have a brilliant time, but still face this brain thing, this human condition. We're having an amazing time. But is it because I blew up so much that should we, I should be enjoying it? That I put pressure on myself to enjoy it? Anyway, this is another conversation, right? But I did make the point of not using the phone and just enjoying the moment. Which is a good, a uh, good point. Yeah. yeah, I absolutely agree with that. But I didn't do it perfectly. I'm just trying to say no, no, it, no, it was it's... not a perfect. Like, although this should have been an amazing moment, it was an amazing moment, but it wasn't a perfect moment. I don't, you know, there were still things I was still, and my brain was still thinking about things. And I think sometimes we like, you're going on a holiday, I'm going on a holiday. We want it to be amazing. But there were moments in that holiday where you may be thinking, oh, I'm not enjoying this as much as I think I would have enjoyed it. Or, or they might exceed the things, but I, that's the thing. I'm just, I'm a bit worried about that, to be fair. Just, I've got this image this of this is holiday. the going okay. with the flow thing you talked about earlier, Joe. Yeah. And, and knowing nice point. that it's all right to get it wrong as well. That's part of it. Mm. That is Go with the flow. Thank you, Lee, for reminding me. Go with the flow, That's actually. your takeaway from today, Joe. I'm giving you that. that is that yours or mine? Because I've got to take that one. No, that's yours. In fact, let's share it. That's our shared I really, I really like that because actually... There is a lot in the mindfulness there, isn't it? Going with yeah. the flow, you know, say the pen thing, the food thing. Do you know what? I think this is really good practice. And do you know what? I'm getting quite inspired by just thinking about it. I'm getting a good, like a, almost like that feeling of, oh, this is something that we need to do a lot more of. I still need to do more of it. More of it. Still don't do enough of it because literally, because we're involved in social, you know, doing the podcast and everything. We, we're quite involved in social, aren't we? Again, yeah. how do we, how do we, you know, get more of it? And thank you everybody for watching on the on the TikTok and everything. But yeah, go on, Lee. Sorry, I no, no, really love this. By I think this has been a, a great topic. Again, it, it's almost time to wrap us up, Joe. Just go on, to then. thank everyone out in the nation for listening to us and watching us and supporting what we do. We massively appreciate it. If you like what we're hearing, tell friends and family, get them listen to. That is the number one way that we grow. Also, if you're new, get back in the archive, look all the way through whatever you're on YouTube or podcast players all our episodes there four years plus worth of content now hit subscribe hit the five star button leave a review all of that helps us in those mythical algorithms um and just follow us on social media at listen to i listen t-o-i-n and joe is jose Neuer, inspiration nation um well everywhere just stick it in google you will find him follow us on youtube and tiktok and you'll be able to join us live each and every week as we record except for the next two weeks because we've stuck some in the can
Uh, it's interesting things on TikTok, actually. David Tennant. I don't know whether they think I look like David Tennant. And do I like microwaves? Uh, I've got no idea. But anyway. Um, I do, by the way. I'll like, say I do like microwaves. Do you? Do you know what? And there's 219 likes, but I was really, when you were talking about microwaves, I really wanted to, oh, instead of being really, sometimes I look at TikTok and I'm trying to really focus on you in that, in this particular time moment. Um, so I need to do more of that, but because sometimes I get distracted, you know, you get distractions. It's like, oh, you're trying to engage with that, but actually, it's I think the life of a social media superstar. But, but we've got to, we've got to be do. more mindful, haven't we? We've got to be more focused and engaged. And I talk about this in my coaching. So I think the thing is, I'm not going to check the TikTok so much because I'm going to focus on the conversation and you much, much more. Yeah, I do focus, but more so, like more intensely. Okay. Like when you said to me, you look really thoughtful. I think was it this one or the last one? No, that was this one. I, I was making a concerted effort to really focus on you. Um, so more of that is going to be using. So, yeah, I love this, by the way. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for indulging more of my self-reflective thoughts and where it leads us. This was another good topic. Hopefully everyone enjoys it. Again, if you like it, engage with us on social media, leave reviews, all that positive stuff helps us. And inspirationnation.org.uk, merchandise, newsletter, archive, all that good jazz. We appreciate everyone. And I'll count us down. Three, two, one. Two, Inspiration one. Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you we'll guys catch later. Catch you guys later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another video is going live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you'd want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.